What's up? This is Eric Ong, and today I'm here with Henry Go. Now, Henry Go is from America, and he has over 22 years of experience in internet marketing. He has worked with the top leaders like Forbes Riley, Gary V, Kevin Harrington, Mike Tyson's life coach, Anik Gupta, and a few others. Okay, so um, welcome to the show, Henry. Well, thank you so much, Alaric, for being here. Thank you so much for everybody that listened to this conversation. I'm excited. Hey. Maybe, maybe you can share with us like your entrepreneurship journey. How do you get started as a digital marketer or an internet marketer? And let's go on from there. Yeah. Well, I started back way back in 1997, just like everybody else. I saw the uh, dot com. Uh, I saw that there was a, a guy named uh, the Yahoo co-founder, which mm -hmm. is uh, Jerry Young, the co-founder of the uh, yahoo.com at that time he was he worked roughly about 275 uh, 270 million dollars and i get curious how did he do it how did he make it happen so for many many years i've been like trying to search on it i was working on the mlm i was like uh, calling people on the phone and then knock on the doors and then trying to figure out the word internet because i had no clue what it was so back to back i decided to quit my job in two, 2002 and decided to go full-time. When I talk full-time, I was talking about working in the 7-Eleven convenience store from 11 p.m. at night until 7 a.m. in the morning. And then from 7 a.m. in the morning, I was slept for two hours. And from 9 a.m., I was working myself to exhaustion until 10 p.m. at night trying to figure out how to build a business online. I didn't have any breakthrough whatsoever until October 31st, 2003. That was the time that I created my first product, which gave me roughly about uh, $10,000. Now, during that period between uh, like uh, in a, from working in the 7-Eleven, I was sleeping on someone's couch. I was pretty dead broke. Mm -hmm. because I didn't, in, um, you know, I was just thinking like I had to make it happen. I had to do something big for my life. So that was the thought of myself. And then I invested, of course, I invested in my mentor uh, first time ever in my life, which is, I said like, hey, um, if, you want me to, uh, if you want me to coach you and all this stuff and everything is going to cost you $5,000. And I said, I didn't have $5,000. If you don't have $5,000, this is what he told me. You got to find five thousand dollars. I said, I give you forty hours. You got to find the money. I said, like, how am I going to find the money? Sure enough, forty hours later, I give him the money, five thousand dollars, and then he was smiling. And then I said, like, w what are you smiling about? You said that you couldn't have five thousand dollars yet. Twenty four uh, forty hours later, you could find forty thousand uh, uh, five thousand dollars. How did you do it? I said I borrowed from my sister, and then I asked for the bank credit card, and then I'm trying to find all the way stuff because it means that you know how to do it. That was the first <laughs> lesson already. So fast forward in two thousand three, I was uh, built. Um, you know, I get I created my first product in which that uh, the guy named Dr. Joe Fitali from the movie The Secret. And he promoted it. Uh, there's also the guy named Mike Filsame. He promoted it as well, which is the, the co-founder of the Groove, uh, Groove Digital. Mm, Used to be the, yeah, huge. And then also Russell Brownson, which is the co-founder of Click, ClickFunnels and everybody else was promoting and all this stuff and everything. They promoted so, your product. Yeah, they promoted my product. I, I, I'm not sure if uh, ClickFunnels promoted, but I, uh, we, we became friends. Uh, we exchanged phone number. He's in the Idaho, boys and all this stuff and everything. And in 2014, I came up with my second product. At the time, that product itself did roughly about 50 grand. Uh, 50 grand in about 30 days and all this stuff and everything. So when people told me that they need to have a big list, I said like, oh, I didn't need to have a big list. Because why? Because I was able to make money on the run. Right. So seems for the heck of just simply say, you know what, they need a big list. Let me just build a big list. But I don't want to be like 1000 subscribers, 2000 subscribers. I felt like that was like not a good idea. In fact, I thought it was a dumb idea. So I decided like I want to build a huge, huge list. So I created what I call the 117 campaign. When I came up with the 117 campaign itself on December 19, 2004, 
I created the campaign within 14 days. Uh, we got roughly about 25,000 subscribers in 14 days using free traffic. And that was, um, then, then after that, you know, I was just thinking like that was the worst campaign that I have ever had in my life. That's what I thought because I was ex expecting about a hundred thousand subscribers yet. I only get 25,000, but neither did I know that I broke the record in the Alexa.com ranking. Um, our website was 327. Um, you know, if Amazon was ranking number one, we were ranking number 327, uh, 327 best website in the world. Wow. Based on Alexa.com. So, and then fast forward, moving forward, uh, one year later, I come up with another campaign, which is a version to itself. And then I successfully, um, you know, I successfully, um, got roughly about 56,000 subscribers in 30 days, mm -hmm. which break the record of Alexa, uh, dot com, which grow to about 189 best traffic website in the world. Okay. So that was just, just a record and after record. And I spoke on the, you know, on the event with Richard, uh, Richard, uh, Chaffron. And then there was a uh, Tom bill over there. Mike Wilson invited me. And then also, uh, who is that? Who is that guy? The product launch formula. I forgot. His uh, name. Jeff Walker, Jeff Walker, you know, Jeff Walker and everybody else over there. So that's, that's how I met all these guys in here. And then I created, uh, I also had my own seminar, which is, uh, uh, paid seminars and all this stuff and everything in Sandusky, Ohio, and then I retired and all this stuff and everything. So fast forward in 2000, uh, for, for, and after, after I had my success, my first success, I decided to retire. The reason I retired was not because, uh, was not because I wanted to retire because I couldn't find my stuff anymore. I didn't understand who I was anymore. So I retired for, uh, I believe like for five years, for mm -hmm. five years, w going, went to the spiritual, uh, spiritual life, trying to understand the purpose of my life. I had no clue who I was. I wanted to find out who I am. So in 2014, I decided to come back and, you know, at the time, uh, neither did I realize that in 2014, the moment that I wanted to come back, my ex left me. I almost became blind. Uh, I experienced blindness. 90% of my eyes were blind on the left side. 50% was blind on the right side. For many, many months, I had this kind of pain on my small neck from mm -hmm. here all the way to the small brain, mm -hmm. in which later on, I found out that it was the beginning of the brain tumor. So... And then uh, 2014, that's when I also met my godfather in which that he told me how to act like a man. So, and then in 2015, uh, you know, my, my ex left me. I didn't care. I just say, oh, okay, once you leave, that's great. That's awesome for me. She was your wife or your girlfriend? It was my, my girlfriend. So then, then after that, I said like, you know what? Uh, fine, I was single. <laughs> which was uh which was like uh, kind of weird i didn't i didn't want to date anymore i was just thinking like probably i will be dead by myself i i probably gonna be alone by myself the rest of my life so in 2016 i moved to new york um you know i decided to change the environment because i didn't like boston anymore plus i didn't have family uh in in boston anyway so i moved to new york uh i tried to get closer to my uh, my godfather and everything like that because he's like more like a spiritual leader he's the one who coached me about how to become limitless mm -hmm. in my life mm -hmm. and then um neither did i realize that uh within within like seven months later that's when i met my wife now mm -hmm. and then we uh soon after that we got married and then i thought like wow things were great and all this stuff and everything and then uh my wife uh, just simply said that, hey, why don't you look at the eye doctors? Because you said that you have a problem with your eyes all the time. So I went to the eye doctors and then they found out that I had a brain tumor the size of the golf ball. Wow. Um, which was the second largest uh, tumor in the en entire New York hospital. <laughs> the, the second largest one. So, and then the first, the first one, I do not know whether he's still alive or not, <laughs> but I had the second largest one. So I was thinking like that was the end of it. And then, and then after that, guess what happened? After that, uh, I realized that, um, you know what I had, to, um, I, they, they only tell me like, Hey, you have to do operation as soon as possible because he's always touching the uh, upper hemisphere of my brain because sometimes I lost memory. I had no clue because let's just say you asked me to do something, um, Ellery, can you just book a hotel reservation? I will just go to my phone. And then when I get my phone and then immediately, and then I would just ask myself, 
what what am I doing? And I forgot. I put on the phone, and I pick up my phone again. What am I doing for like thirty minutes, one hour? I couldn't. I, I couldn't. I had no clue what I was doing. And then I got so frustrated, almost crying many days. And I decided, you know what? It's time for me to leave my legacy. So I put up all the package together, put everything that I knew for eighteen years, and then I sell it. Uh, sell it online. I created the will. I transfer all my. A position from uh, from being a you know from being a CEO to my vice president. I give a three month salary to my all my employees. I created the will. I put all my stuff into the box just in case uh, my wife need to sell my place and all this stuff and everything. And then uh, then after that, I also created a campaign which I sold roughly about a quarter million dollars in like two weeks and all this stuff and everything. Wow. And then after that, I was just done with it and I simply said that you know what, that's it. I'm in operating room right now, October 17, 2017, and I was just two thumbs up like this. I was so happy, and I was wearing the gown for the first time in my life. I had no clue what it was, and then I went to the hospital. Uh, I, I went. Uh, they say like you have to walk to the operating room because you're still alive. You're not under <laughs> anything. And then I look at myself like there was ten people in front of me. So, uh, soon, soon enough, blackout, mm-hmm. and I had no clue what happened. And then uh, when then I mimically remembered there was a lady in front of me. She was keep crying all the time. I, I I was so annoyed by her because you know after the brain tumor surgery for like almost four or five hours, you were under a lot of heavy anesthesia. When you were under a lot of heavy anesthesia, you had no clue who you uh, who you were. You had no clue about your surrounding. But I remembered what I told her. This is what I remember what I told her. Okay, she said that I asked her, "Why are you crying?" That's what I asked her, because uh, but I had no clue why I said that either. <laughs> mm-hmm. And she said, "I'm crying because I was dying." That's what she told me. At the time, her her blood pressure was sometimes a hundred, sometimes two hundred, a hundred, two hundred, a hundred, two hundred, and all this stuff and everything. I said, "So what?" I said, "Dying is part of living." I I, I suggest your audience not to do that. Unless you are under anesthesia, which she had no clue what you were doing, and then she's, this is one uh, one sentence that she gave it to me that I will never forget. She said that I wasn't afraid of dying. I regret on things that I didn't do when I was alive. That's what she told me. After that, I was awake, quite awake. It was an awakening moment for me because I was selfish. Even though I knew about the word limitless since 2014, mm-hmm. I never shared it with people. Why? Because I was selfish. I only care about myself. And then after that, fast forward, I uh, three days, I get out from the hospital. Uh, the other guy probably do not know what happened to him, but the doctor said that, hey, don't get out so fast and so fast because you need to take a break. So I took a break for like six months. Mm-hmm. During that six months alone. What she taught me made, just kept um, embedded into my brain. It planting the seed into my brain. Not only that, four months after the brain tumor surgery, my younger sister passed away. She passed away because she had a broken soul. Mm -hmm. We came from the family uh, that uh, my dad would call everybody loser, everybody pick. And then my, my dad would call her slut all the time. Even though she was helping my dad with her business and all this stuff and everything. Mm-hmm. And for many, many years since they helped my dad, since they helped my dad, I will hear her crying. Mm-hmm. I will, uh, she will call my other sister, my other sibling, say that I, I feel so sad. Why did she, he do this to me and all this stuff for, thir- for 13 years? It was like living hell for her. And then after she passed away, I realized that if I don't share the word limitless to a lot of people, a lot more, a lot more people gonna die and they had no clue why they died. Mm-hmm. They had no clue why they died. So I decided to come out. I decided to say, you know what? This is it. I'm just gonna come up with the word limitless. I'm gonna share it all with everybody. So, and I get up uh, after six months, bed rest, I woke up, I overtook the helmet and I started to uh, give contents. I started to share the word limitless to people. And then every day I will receive email such as, 
Henry, you had no clue what you have done for me. He said that I was about to commit suicide this today. That's what he said. But when I read your letter, I felt so silly. I felt so dumb because your situation was worse than me. I just wanted to kill myself just because of us, uh, my, my, my ex left me. But you give me the strength. And after that, I didn't care. I only had two employees left. And then I, I developed my business. I, uh, I spoke on stage. And then I spoke in front of 500 people. And then, you know, I partnered up. Within two and a half years now, my business already grew to over more than 20, 20 plus people working together with me. Mm -hmm. So the thing that what people don't realize is everybody is limitless only if they want it. Everybody is limitless only if they want it. Inside of us, there are two types of energy. One is the, what we call the yin energy and the other one is called yang energy. Do you know about uh, Pakwa? Do you know about Pakwa? Pakwa, yeah. Great, yeah, yeah, Pakwa. Yeah. Pakwa is the, you know, is a black and white. Yeah. Black and white. Black represent darkness. White represent, uh, represent light. But regardless whether you like it or not, inside each one of us, there's a Pakwa. There's a darkness. There's also light. Mm -hmm. So, but these two source of energy, they focus only on two separate things. The dark energy, which is what I always call Mr. Demon, he always focus on one thing. The one thing itself is to bring, bring people with uh, the foundation is to make sure people uh, the, at the end of their life, that person going to live with regret, despair, and loneliness. The other one is to bring them so that this person going to live with a fear, fearless mindset, bald and limitless for the rest of their life. Now, when Alric, when I saw you, the way you have interviewed other expert, I mean, you just go all the way. You just don't care. You just follow your vision. You just follow what you want. That is a big difference. That is a big difference. A lot of people at the age of your age, they're just like, oh, you know, what, what if this person look at me? What if that person look at me? But you, for some reason, you are not one with the darkness. You're one with the light all the time. So you just know, like, I want this, I want this, I want this, I want this, I want this to, want this to, to make it happen. At your age, that is almost unheard of unheard of most people they have to be on my age i know i'm 24 because i started when i was two but the thing is that what i want to mention to people is you both of us has the yin and yang energy the yin energy is going to bring us to the darkness for the rest of our life the yang energy mr yang is going to bring you to the light of your life mm -hmm. what which the question is who are you going to listen to who are you going to listen to Unfortunately for my sister, my younger sister, she listened to the yin energy, which is the darkness energy, in which that she died because of the broken soul before her time. Mm. Okay. That is my story. <laughs> awesome. Wow. So that's why you came up with uh, Limila. So would you say you're more of a, uh, like an entrepreneurship coach or you're more of a life coach? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm more like, there's a two sides of things mm -hmm. in life. I'm more like what, uh, what I call the business strategies. Business strategies in a way that, um, let's just say right now, you build a big business, okay? Mm -hmm. You build a big business and you go all the way top with the people like Mike Tyson, Life Coach, uh, Grant Cardone, Richard Branson, and everybody else. Mm -hmm. You know, like uh, uh, Anil Gupta, which is Mike Lesson Life Coach, is also my students. Mm -hmm. and he called me marketing genius and all this stuff and everything. Um, but the thing is that he is a spiritual genius. He's like a love, uh, he's, we call him Dr. Love. The thing about Anil Gupta is he is willing to humble himself to be willing to learn from me. Mm -hmm. Okay. With his connection, he told me like, oh, uh, Henry, wh who would you like to meet? I said, I would like to meet uh, the princess. Oh, okay, no problem. I can hook you up. That's what he said. He, he uh, and then like uh, right now, Henry, I I have to call you back later. I said why? Because right now I'm in palace because they were about to, uh, you know, they have this was that Prince uh, Prince Harry and the other uh, the the lady Mar Markel. I, I do not know her name, mm -hmm. and they, they get married and all this stuff and everything. I'm in palace right now because we are about to meet the queen. 
That's how humble he is. So the thing that what people don't understand is this: it is easy to build a big business, but uh, it is it takes time to build a big business. It takes seconds to ruin it. Mm -hmm. I have seen from time to time they were so super smart people. They were able to build a business, but guess what happened? They ruin it just because of anger. Mm -hmm. They ruin it just because they think that they are super super smart guy. Like for example, you are working with uh, you know some of the top uh, top people in here. Sometimes yeah. they will they will tell you casually, just say, "Hey, would you like to work with me on maybe option A, or option B?" Mm -hmm. And some some people say that you know this is some, most most of the people say oh look at him right now he want to work with me and all this stuff and everything, mm -hmm. but what we didn't understand is when the opportunity come we have to be ready for it. Yeah, this is what they don't understand. So a lot of successful people I work with they just simply say that oh okay Henry um, why um, I have something that I probably probably something that is useful for you. Mm -hmm. Guess what I do? Uh, he said that uh, what I do is okay. Tell me. Instead of saying, "Oh, look at this guy. He's about to tell me stuff. Look at me. I'm a big shot." A lot of people do that. Mm -hmm. A lot of people. The majority of the people do that. Yeah. And then one day, one of my mentors, uh, he said that Henry. He said, "Yeah, uh, what's up?" I, uh, he called me on the phone. He said, "Why did you book your ticket uh, July second to July 5th? Uh, going to Las Vegas. I said, okay, which hotel should I stay? Okay, uh, where did you stay between this uh, hotel or the Marriott Hotel? Because you got a lot of points anyway. So uh, which hotel do you want to stay? But I, I prefer that you stay in this hotel because they have a nice view. Mm -hmm. I had no clue why he asked me to book the ticket. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, uh, I'll do it right now. Uh, about 15 minutes later, done. I sent him the... I sent in the itiner itinerary and wow. I'm done with it. I had no clue what is upcoming, but I'll be there. When I was there, he showed me how to build a nine-figure business mm. for four days straight. He showed me step by step. This is how you do it. This is how you tackle to the media. This is how you do. Here's the word leverage. This is how you do it. This is how you do that. He showed wow. me the whole nine yards. And it, I was it was a one-on-one -on -one coaching. One-on-one -on -one coaching. Well, for four but days. He never. Well. For he never told me anything. He just said, "Why did you come?" Now, the one word that could destroy me at the time was simple, as simple like, "No, I, I'm busy right now. I don't have the time for it." Mm -hmm. That one word itself could have destroyed me, just because of one thing. So, business strategies is can it will include your mentality as well, right. but also include your strategy as well. Mm -hmm. So, those are very important Not right now. As, as we talk right now at this moment itself, mm -hmm. I, have, I have my team, uh, my partners doing the closing for me for $12,000. And then another team is scheduling for different calls already. Mm -hmm. Another team is, uh, another team members are working on the, another webinar with other marketers already. Mm -hmm. So what do I have to lose? Yeah. What do I do right now? I'm just... Uh, investing my time on this interview. That's it. Yeah. So the thing is that if you do not understand the full concept of this, then business strategies itself is become not useful to a lot of people. Why? Because they just they just say, is that going to be self improvement or is that going to be business? It's both at the same time. Yeah. It's both at the same time, and you need to know how to talk, what to talk, and at the right moment, at the right time, you got yeah. to be able. To um, you got to be able to understand what this person wants before this person knows what he wants. Like I mentioned to Mike Tyson Life Anil, Anil Gupta at the time, Mike Tyson Life Coach, I said that, uh, why don't you come to New York? I'll show you. And immediately, because Anil, uh, Anil Gupta is a smart guy, he's a wise guy, he immediately flew all the way to New York to see me. Mm -hmm. When he flew all the way to New York to see me, within a few, uh, two hours, I show it to him. This is how it is done. He's like, I never thought about it that way. Mm -hmm. This is genius. This is smart. This is awesome. So the thing that what I want to mention is a lot of time people don't understand it, but it is there.
So when uh, the Peter Walving, which is the guy that owned a $1 billion platform, he said that, hey, Henry, do you want to speak on my event, Million Dollar Workshop in New York? I said, uh, yeah, sure, why not? And um, you can, you can, and then he said, like, you can sell anything you want, but uh, we, um, I, I'll, I'll be honest with you. He said, like, why? What is it? I'll be honest with you. Actually, um, we, we have tried before. It didn't work. Nobody buys stuff. That's what he said. I said, don't worry about it, buddy. I mean, I mean if, uh, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Who cares? What I care most is I'm able to impact people mm -hmm. because I care about the power of one. Yeah. If one person, uh, one person, uh, you know, I can make a difference in that person, that's good enough. Mm -hmm. And out of, out of 10 people, that sh uh, 11 people that show up, 10 people bought. Wow. And he was like, like this. I said, why? I said, Henry, this is like everybody. This is like 95% closing rate. That is impossible. <laughs> and I said, like, well, you asked me to speak, so I speak. What, what else do you want? <laughs> what else do you want, right? That's what I said. And then after that, we got... Uh, we got a couple people paying me 12, 12 grand each. And then all, all I did was spending 10 minutes with her. Mm. 10 minutes with her. Mm. So the, the thing that I want to mention to you is how did I do it? How, how it is done? And how did we make it happen? If, if that has to do with only business strategy alone? Mm -hmm. Or is that with something else? Mm. With people, it's not about business strategy alone. If you talk with people, business strategy alone, then it's not going to work. It's mm -hmm. all about both of them at the same time. Got it. Cool. What are your tips about marketing and how do you close 95% of the room? Here's the thing. Uh, I will say in a simple term, your heart. Mm -hmm. Your heart. The power of one. Do you understand about the power of one? That if you can just impact one life, one person at a time, is it? Exactly. Because my, my, my attention is to transform that person. Mm -hmm. Transform one person. Mm -hmm. Transform one person. I'll, I'll, I'll give you an example. There's one guy. He came to my office. He came to my office for uh, for group mastermind. Mm -hmm. uh, the group mastermind was Thursday. And then what happened is he showed up on Friday. So uh, the, Thursday is the group mastermind from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. That was it. So he showed up on Friday. I could just say, oh, you know what? You show up on Friday, buddy. Sorry. Oh, we cannot take you. I could do that. Instead, I just say, you know what? Why don't you come with me? I'll still do it for eight hours, even though only one person show up. I said, uh, why don't, uh, you know, on the group mastermind, I always give them coffee. I give them lunch. I give them a snack. I give them everything right because i want them to feel like home mm -hmm. because they are they are the people they come to see me mm -hmm. so um you know if i focus only on cash guess what happened mm -hmm. i wouldn't i would say simply said you know what go home buddy that's what i'm gonna do but i didn't <laughs> i focus on just helping him sharing with him at the end of the eight hours he said that i signed up he gave me 12 grand for it mm -hmm. that's it now i also do another webinar there was only three people show up mm -hmm. the host was so upset I, I feel so embarrassed and all this stuff and everything i said like don't worry i'll still i'll still gonna do this mm -hmm. for you yeah. regardless even if only you are there i'm gonna still doing it <laughs> that's what i said and then at the end this person became a client for 12, uh, 12, 12 grand. Mm. Do you understand? Yes. That's the impact of it. And another friend asked me like, hey, Henry, can you, uh, can you uh, speak on uh, for me? Uh, but it's going to be 10 p.m. at night. I said, sure, I'll do it. And then this, this guy right now want to introduce me to um, everybody on his network that is going to be speaking all over Southeast Asia. Mm. Wow. And all this stuff. Yeah. And then I just say like, I said, buddy, the reason I'm doing this because I'm only helping you. Mm. Okay. That, that the thing that he asked me to speak, it was free. There was no selling whatsoever. Mm. 
There was no selling whatsoever. It was free. So in, uh, then I just say, I'll still do it just because you're my friend. Mm -hmm. Okay. Another friend is the same thing. Uh, another friend, um, uh, he owned a $1 million car in Singapore. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to mention the name over here, uh, but I, I'll mention in private for you. But the thing is that, you know, what happened is when, when he came all the way from Singapore uh, to New York just to see me. Mm. And he bring four CEO together with him. And then the next time when he bring, uh, bring, he bring 10 people together with him. Guess what happened? I was busy at the time, but I made the time. I became a tour guide for him. Mm -hmm. I became a tour guide for like three days, uh, four days, four days. Mm -hmm. And then one of them that he introduced me to is a Groupon Asia CEO. Uh, the, one of the good friends with a Groupon Asia CEO. Mm. And then this guy can invest roughly about a hundred million dollars. And guess what? We are friends. Mm. But the thing is that the way I conduct myself is like, oh, nothing special. Like, oh, uh, like this, like that. I, I'll, I con that's the way I conduct myself. And then, I then what happened on the last day, the last day before he left, I just get a message from my sister. Said that my father passed away. Mm -hmm. I didn't tell my friends about it. I didn't tell my friends about it. It was like 7 a.m. in the morning. I didn't tell my friends about it because I had to take him to the airport in the New York airport and all this stuff. So uh, I received the message roughly around 5 a.m. in the morning. 5 a.m. Mm -hmm. in the morning. So when, when, I went, when, when I went to the airport, uh, you know, my friend said, hey, man, thank you so much. I said, thank you for being you and all this stuff and everything. My friend couldn't even see on my face uh, from that I was grieving or anything like that. Because I always put a smile on my face. Mm. Because why? Because it's all about people. People come first. Mm. What can you do for this person? What can you do to boost his reputation? So when uh, when I approach, I, I have like uh, eight partners that I was, I'm, uh, nine partners I'm working with. I'm thinking about what can I do for them? Mm. What can I do to boost their reputation? What can I do to give them the most benefit? What can I do to reduce the workload? And as you, as we are doing the interview right now, I get like a couple of partners has been messaging me saying that, Hey, can, Henry, can you help me with this one? Now, before they know it, I'm already done with helping him before he knew what he wanted. I already told him, I mentioned to him, like, this is exactly what I've done. Oh, I was about to ask you that, but it's already done right now. Mm -hmm. So I was able to, um, the way it works in the business strategies is you will be able to anticipate what your partners want before they know they want it. Mm. that's the power of this awesome great so if people want to follow you what are your social media handles or what's your website yeah um, they can go to the limitlesslife.com if they go to the limitlesslife.com they can download my book um, they can, not, not downloading my book they can read my book on my website for free I have this uh, where is my book here let me see where is my book let me let me let me bring it up yeah Okay. Is that, is that good? Is that better? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but put, talk to the mic. Yeah. So, if, so that I can hear you. Yeah. Is that better? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's my book. And this book itself is sharing with you about the yin and yang. Mm -hmm. So when, when you go to my website, the limitless, li uh, the limitless life .com, what happened is they can, they can just subscribe. They can read my book for free. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, and what happened is this book is roughly only about, not very long, about roughly about 80 plus pages only, about 100 pages long. And what happened with this book is going to share with you all the, uh, you know, all the technique on how you can live a limitless life from today's world. It has been, it got, it got like a testimony from the CEO of the JV Zoo, which is the $500 million CEO. It got testimony from a lot of other people as well on this book alone. Is it the limitlesslife.com or limitlesslife.com? The limitlesslife.com. Okay, got it. And uh, are you on Facebook or any social media handles you want to share with them? Um, they can always add me on uh, Henry Gold, just henry.gold, and then they can just tag me on that. I'll be uh, more than happy to answer that question. Like, here's the thing it's all about people. I'm getting older. I'm getting older. Okay, awesome. So, uh, there's another, okay, got it. 
All right. So here's the thing that I want to mention. Like, uh, you know, when they they read the book, they'll be able to understand what they need to do. Like, uh, you know, uh, on the the limalosive.com itself, when they read the book, they subscribe to it. They can read the book for free. Um, that that book itself is going to help them to understand what they need to do moving forward with their life. Cool. Sounds good. Thank you so much for doing this interview. I think your story is super inspiring. I I, mm. I know it will touch lives, and uh, great. Great to have you on the interview. Um, thank you for having me here as well. Oh, you also mentioned about the, my Facebook handle. Yeah. Um, you know, my Facebook is henry.gold, H-E-N-R-Y dot G-O-L-D. So just want to double check on that because it, we got a little bit cut off and all this stuff and everything. Sure. So henry.gold, they can reach out to me. They can say hi. You know, I'll be more than happy to say hi to them back. All right. Thank awesome. you guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. Bye-bye.